Hey everybody, Garrett, we're here with Fish Finders. Finally getting up and going with this YouTube channel. I've had a lot of guys ask me about different things, asking me about what does Fish Finders mean, what do we stand for, you know, what type of content we're going to give. So I figured, why not, while I'm preparing for a trip tomorrow, we're fishing out of Leonardo Marina uh, in, uh, in Jersey with the Sea Beast, with my good friend, Captain Dustin Stroll, uh, we're fishing, uh, me, my, my uncle, uh, Alonzo, my good friend, Mike Sadowski, Tommy Guns, we're going to be fishing with, uh, the Sea Beast tomorrow, so, as I normally do, the day prior, or even a couple days before, I prepare, uh, you know, piss poor preparation, as we state in our world, produces piss poor performance, so I really feel like, the better prepared fishermen are the most successful fishermen. Whether or not that's true, I believe that it's uh, it helps. So we're gonna talk about some of the tog rigs that I use. A lot of different guys refer to them as blackfish, tatog, the marine name tataga anitis, uh, as they go by if you if you Googled it. But um, we're gonna stick to keeping it as tog for. Uh, for this video purpose for these video purposes so first and foremost the two rigs that I use personally um, I've been using the the Jersey slider or the Belmar slider or as my good friend Kid Cochise likes to say the Garrett Ware rig one of his uh tutorials on, on blackfish on, on tog he talked about uh, some different setups he uses and one of them is something I showed him with the uh, slider rig excuse me and uh he calls it the Garrett Way Rig, but it's actually the Belmar Slider or even the Brooklyn Slider Rig, you know, to, depending on what geography you fish. Um, I'm based in Long Island, uh, Valley Stream. I fish the Western Long Island and also probably fish Eastern Long Island much more than I fish Western Long Island. Uh, I fish into Brooklyn, into Jersey. I mean, I truly, we truly uh, fish find, hence the name Fish Finders. And Fish Finders is spelled with a PH, by the way, as you see in the... Uh, the YouTube name, PH for fish and PH for finder. Uh, but we, that's where the name kind of originated from because we, we chase the fish and we fish find. Uh, so we're going to jump right into it. So the two rigs, the one I've been using mostly for the last couple of years is the, uh, the, the slider rig. And the other rig, which I'll start first, is something that I kind of figured out this year. And I started using it much more. My good friend, Mike Sadowski, kind of showed me a little twist on it. So it's the snafu rig. So as you know, the snafu rig, so I have my, so I keep my stuff kind of wrapped here in the little Shimano binder, has pages, like a, like a notebook type of thing. I have everything labeled, literally, uh, so I know where everything's at. You know, I'm very organized as a fisherman, I try to be. You know, I have 80 pound test fluoro, 60 pound test fluoro. I'm very anal, I'm very, very detail oriented when it comes to um, my rigs, my rig tying. I like to use fluorocarbon for, for tog. Um, I feel, although uh, a lot of guys will argue it and a lot of different POVs, point of views on it, but personally, I think that I just play it safe. Use, use fluorocarbon and let the rest take over. I mean, I don't, I don't wanna have a day where I'm using monofilament and they're being spooked by the leader and then you know we switch over and I could have been catching fish with fluorocarbon so I stick to fluorocarbon I use a plethora of different sizes brands in front of me here I have 60 pound test cedar blue label I have 50 pound test cedar blue label I have trick fish 50 pound test fluorocarbon uh, Prospect by Berkeley, 50 pound test. Again, I kind of, depending on the geography I'm fishing, the area, the temperature even, I mean, you know, I feel like the colder it gets, I stick with the 60 and the 80, sometimes even more 80. Um, earlier in the season, I go with the 50. It's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's really something I just like, what, you know, preference, what I like to do. If, I, if I'm fishing a big wreck, you know, sticky bottom, you know, all these things kind of play factor into what I decide to fish, but everybody's different, right? So I personally like to stick with what I like and what I feel comfortable with. Um, that also goes to tackle, rods, reels, 
you know, knots line. It's all about what you feel comfortable with. Because when you hook up with that fish of a lifetime, make sure that it's your destiny to catch that fish. And if something in that equation, if one piece of that chain is weak, we know what's going to happen. That fish is still going to be a fish of your destiny because you're not going to catch it. Um, I've been fortunate enough to get some really big talk and I broke off on two that to this day I still talk about. So hopefully I can get a chance to, to, to fight with those once again. But until, until now, I kind of live, live in the uh, reality of those two fish that broke me off and the, uh, the trophies that I've, that I've, I have caught. So getting into this rig, um, just want to show you guys. So this would be the normal, uh, snap food rig that a lot of guys, I guess, you know, up and down the East coast tie. And it's, you know, it's pretty similar, relatively um, easy to tie. You know, you, you take about, depending on how long or how short you want it to be, you take a two to three foot leader, even one foot, again, depending how short you want it to be or long you want it to be, a liter of line, again, whether it's monofilament or fluorocarbon, and you snell two hooks on each end, and you do a dropper loop in the middle. And depending on the quality of line that you're using or the quality of top shot or, excuse me, the leader you're using, you'll get it a really T- shape like this or you know, this one I believe this is tied on a monofilament leader so it's just a simple you know probably two two and a half feet snelled on each end and a dropper loop in the middle I've kind of gotten away from the dropper loop for everything uh, the dropper loop has not treated me well I broke off on a really big fish two years ago doing a dropper loop above the sinker technique where you connect the, the loop of the hook to the dropper loop, it didn't work out well for me. So I decided, you know what? No more dropper loop for me. So I don't do the dropper loop on anything. You know, everything I connect is with a tie of some sort. So, I mean, I'll talk, talk about that a little bit more as this video progresses. But for now, just wanted to kind of give you guys a visual of the normal uh, snafu rig. So the difference is the way I tie it is I have been doing an approach where um, it's more streamlined, it's more clean. I like it a lot. It, 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 um, I feel like it's stronger. So what we do, plain and simple, we get a piece of a leader. Again, it could be two to three feet. And for this one, I'll do, I'll do about two feet of leader. You know, not, not even, I'll keep it short. Let's do a foot and a half. So, uh, let me put my snip here. Here we go. I use uh, fisherman's clippers to pretty much have them on my neck all the time. So as I showed you some of the different um, brands of fluorocarbon I use, always got to have some good a good IPA to wet your palate too when you're doing this. It always helps. Uh, Showed you some of the different brands of fluorocarbon I use. I also use a lot of different hook brands. But I pretty much stick to one brand that I use most, that I feel most confident with, and that's Owner. The Owner Cutting Points. Uh, I like the 5 -0. Just the owner, Owner's profile seems to run a little small, so I go with the 5 -0s. I think they're a perfect size. 6 -0s work is work well, too. Um, when you use those big white crabs, or even from down to Virginia, using those uh, blue claw crabs, you can use the six O's. But I, th I feel like the five O's are a good median, and and they uh they work well with small crabs. Um, you know, unless you're using like those small Asian crabs, or excuse me, even small green crabs early in the season. You know, uh, the gnat's a little different. You may only go lower, pro smaller profile. But again, I I fish bigger baits. I use a lot of whole crabs. I never really, I don't go pieces. Again, it's a preference thing. I like two hooks and one crab, good presentation, let them eat. That's what I do. That's what I feel comfortable with. That's what I've had my success with. So, you know, like anything else, any sport, any competition, you go with what you feel comfortable. And um, my approach is my approach. And um, 
it bodes well because uh, I feel like if I can consistently do it over and over again, that's where my success lies. Uh, I use Foro cutting points as well. I'll even use the um, the super needle points. So here I have some super needle points. Um, you know, again, uh, I feel most comfortable with the cutting points. I feel like they're stronger. The super needle points are a smaller wire or, or a more delicate wire. So you know, if you hook into a good fish and you know you're you're fishing a lot of uh, a lot of real estate with some structure, you could bend that hook and possibly you know straighten the hook out. So again, you know, fish for what you feel comfortable with and what you know. These it can get pricey. I mean, a this is a thirty pack. I believe these go for about twenty bucks. You know, on, on eBay, you may find them for eighteen, seventeen if you look around. But say the going rate's about twenty dollars. So. You may spend a couple dollars on these, but again, they're worth it. Um, the super needle points are a little cheaper. I have found, although um, a good alternative, the VMCs I've been using. And the VMCs are the uh, forged offset octopus hooks. Um, it doesn't, unfortunately, this set, I mean, this pack I opened up and I don't have the, um, the insert to show you the label. But if you look it up, the... Uh, the number is 7199CB is the number on it. And it's the VMC's Forge Octopus Hooks. They're really good. I like I've been like I like them a lot. I've been using them um you know, days where I'm losing a lot of hooks, a lot of rigs. I may throw these on. Again, my go-to are the owners. And I, but I also, you know, use the gummies. And the gummies, you know, I've had fish straighten them out, so they're great hooks. But again, it's all about preference and I use them from 4050, 60, depending if I use a bigger style. The good thing about Gami is I always have them because I use them for fluke fishing. I use them for porgy. I use them for everything. You know, sea bass fishing. You know, I use like this is the big 60s when I'm sea bass fishing to really load those baits on or fluke fishing when I'm throwing on those gulps. Um, those big those big rub worms. So they work out well, especially the uh, the bait holder. So I always have 60 Gami's. So you know, day, a day where I'm losing a lot of rigs, I may throw on a 6 gami. So again, it's all about preference. So getting back into the the snafu rig, you can have a liter, again, depending on how long you want it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these uh, cutting point owner hooks. And I'm gonna do a simple snell. Um, the way I snell my hooks is, is really old school. My dad taught me a way that I've kind of stuck with. And um, a lot of things I do is old school, like USA made reels and um, things like that. You know, I just like to do things kind of the way I like to do them. Uh, I kind of start at the top and go down. I do eight to 10, you know, uh, wraps, depending on the diameter of the leader. Um, in this case, I'll just do eight. So I'll start high with one wrap and then you um, concurrently wrap you know, uh, I guess depending on what verbiage you want to use, it'll be um, distal or down away from the top of the eye of the hook. Um, that's what I'll do. So one, we do eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have really big hands, so you may not be able to see this if you if you uh, and big fingers as well. Um, that's what she said. <laughs> and uh, if you. I guess zoom in, you get a better look at this. I wet all my knots. You know, a dry knot's a weak knot. A wet knot is a strong knot. So as you're doing this, you wet your knots. So I wet the whole thing, even when I'm um, pulling the line, pulling the leader through. Go ahead and tighten that down. I'm in a dining room right now in, a man in my man cave when I normally do these. I forgot to wrap it here because the lighting is better, but uh, when I wrap this in the man cave, I uh, I have a, a nail and I go ahead and cinch that knot down. Again, you want to make sure that these knots are wet because again, a wet knots are strong knot. And you go ahead and cinch that down. I tighten both ends, the bottom end and the top, and the top end of the knot. Again, there's no rhyme or reason to how you do it. Just make sure that your snails are clean. It's a pretty clean snail right there. Um, I snip everything at the end just to make sure it's streamlined nice and clean. So once everything is cinched down the way I like it, I go and then I snip it down. 
So again, so there's you uh, snow one end, and then you go ahead and snow the other end, and then you'll get what I have here is two ends snelled. So what I'm going to do here is the tricky way, again, the normal way guys have been doing it is they'll take this. This is, again, um, this is a longer leader I did it on. I wanted a longer profile. And they'll make a dropper loop here, and boom, as what I showed you in the beginning of the video. And they'll have, you know, the standard snap through that way. Um, the improved way I've been doing it is you keep two, you, you uh, keep the two hooks even. You want to even them out. So now I have about a 13 or 14 inch leader. And I'm gonna do two overhand knots. Keep the two hooks even. I go up about four inches. And then I do two overhand knots. Actually, I'm gonna do about three inches. Most important thing is keeping those hooks even as you're doing it. Go up about three inches, keep it even one overhand knot and you come right back in for a second with the knot cinch it down take those two even hooks take your open the top of your uh, loop or the top of your leader cinch it down with everything when i'm cinching there you go now i'll come with my snips and i'll clean up the loose ends of the of my snells. One, two. So now what we have here is a snafu or improved snafu, as I like to call it, where the two hooks are even. So now instead of that old school snafu, where the two hooks are out. And then you're putting two hooks in a crab with a loose, you know, about a loose line, streamlined. So this connects to the leader, which I'll show you in a second how I do that. And then these two hooks can go into each leg of the crab. We're using the pieces, two pieces, two pieces separately. And you can fish them like this, or as I like to do it, two hooks in each socket of the crab. And you have a presentation like this coming off the line. And that's how I like to fish it. And uh, it's pretty effective. You know, you have a lot of two hook hookups in a pallet right in the roof of his mouth. When you feel that bite, can they eat that whole crab? Unless they kind of a chomp on one side, you know, the bigger fish, they're, they're chomping that whole, they're swallowing that whole crab. I'm putting two hooks in that fish's mouth, the roof of his mouth, and he's he's not going anywhere. So that's right there, the, the improved uh, snafu style. Now, going back to the second option would be the slider rig. So here I have, as I stated before, you snell, you snell it on one side. Um, you're not doing both sides here. You're just snelling on one side. So I take my snell hook and um, I personally like to use on my sliders just two different colors. It's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just something I like to do. Um, these are both owner cutting points um i believe actually that this the slider hook might be a, a needle point again no reason for it i just like to use the needle points the slider um because it's so sticky and i use the uh the stronger hook which i believe the cutting point for the snell side then what i do is let me just get this hook out Go ahead, once it's snelled, I uh, drop that second hook down. Some guys do it the opposite way and they, they create a heart shape, as let me show you, like this. And some, some mates in Jersey will ask you, do you want the heart shape? Um, it's all preference. I personally like them both sticking up. So I, I drop it the same way the initial hook is snelled. So you drop it down. I get it like that. And what I'm doing here is, this is how it's gonna profile. 
when I hook the crab, I usually hook a crab, the first crab with the snow side, and then I, I have the ability to be variable, as we call it, with the slider hook, and hook two pieces into a crab, and then having a one liter coming off. And that's pretty much it. What I do with the knot here is I do something called a figure eight loop, and I'll let you see that, make a small loop. Some guys use the perfection, the perfection knot. Again, it's all about preference. I personally like to use this overhand figure eight and you make a loop, you wrap it once. Excuse me, my big finger trying to make it visual to you. Make one loop, wrap it once, hold it. I come back over then I come under that loop. And when you have big fingers, it makes it a little bit tougher, but uh, I make it work. Especially when you're fishing like tomorrow, it'll be 30 degrees, so it'll be cold. It's not for novice tomorrow, but you know, that's why we invest in the right equipment, the right gear for, for days like tomorrow. And hopefully they'll be chilling tomorrow. As soon as we get there, they'll be chilling. I'm actually about to go pick up the white crab shortly. And I wet my knot, cinch it down. And that's it. Cinch it down. When you do this little word of advice, try not to have, if you're not doing it with a nail or on a work table, workstation, try to do it um, where you're keeping the leader away from, from the, the creases in your hands because that leader will cut right through. So, especially when you're fishing and you're hurt and you're rushing tying a rig, it'll literally right in the creases, it'll cut you there. So, sort of advice, be careful for that. Try to do somewhere where you have meat, not not really those creases, and it will help you out. Don't cut your skin, sort of advice. Cinch it down, I snip. Make sure the other side is where it needs to be. I always cover the hook with my fingers, so in case it slips. I don't get a hook in the mouth. That's it. This is about, uh, say, 11, 12 inch. Oh, excuse me, 12. I usually tie it between 12 to 14 inches is where I like it. That's my happy zone. Um, this one's about 14 inches. And again, it allows me, if I sh have a big crab and I shorten up, I still have, you know, eight inches of leader coming off that main line. I come with my snip. Let me just make sure I don't get this nice and clean. Let's, let's cinch it down one more time. As you see, I mean, I'm really anal in making sure that it's it's cinched down because it's a, it's a preference thing, but also I feel strongly if I can't break this knot with my strength, I don't feel a fish that's 20, you know, 15, 20 pounds gonna break it. That's how I feel. You know, I wanna make sure that it's, it's tested, it's tackle tested. Go ahead and clean it. Boom. So here we have Two different styles. The Jersey slider, Bromont slider, Brooklyn slider, however you want to call it, was just a simple 13, 12, 12 inch leader on two hooks, one is a slider, and you knew an improved snafu with two hooks streamlined on a double, on, a, on one leader on each side. Now, what I'll do is I'll connect it to you to the main line just to give you an idea of, you know, the best way to do it, the way I do it. Um, I will use these rock covers. I think they're great. I actually, so whenever I'm, whenever I'm going on boats, I keep, I order them by the uh, bulk and I sell them to guys. Mine just happen to have, you know, Garrett Wear, Fish Finder on them, rep my brand, you know, just to always, the guys to always see, you know, the Fish Finder brand. Um, um, mine said say my name on them, but um, you know, I have always have. If you see me you see me fishing anywhere, you come to me and ask me. I always have some. If I sell them for ten bucks, just to uh, you know, just to get guys awareness and taking care of their stuff. All my rods are custom rods. Um, this particular rod is a uh, Jigging World Black uh, Black Demon. Um, it's the medium heavy. Uh, you know, the true. No tall rod in the Northeast. This is a 7.5, I believe it is. 
the medium heavy action um, works really great. It works really well with Batog. Um, this is my like medium, you know, I guess not in, not in shore, like it's deep water too, but I have it wrapped uh, conventional style, not the acid wrap or spiral wrap that guys do it. I like it straight up, you know, uh, conventional style. It works well for me. Feel comfortable with that. All my rods are that way. I will although start trying this power wrap this year. Uh, my good friend Ralph over at uh, uh, what's the name of that place? Uh, Crafty Ones Customs out in Rhode Island. Um, met the guy Ralph. Great guy. Loved his service. Decided to um, have him build me a rod, and I'm gonna be using it this spring for fluke. So my first spiral wrap, it'll be a fluke uh, spiral wrap. It's, I believe it's the Nexus, the Jigger World Nexus. My what, my go-to tog rod is actually the um, the Phoenix Black Diamond, the PSW 700H. That's rated to tw uh, 20 to 60. Um, my braid and what I do is, so I have kind of two offset um, presentations. It's always gonna be 50 pound braid for tog. Um, I don't go higher than that just because I feel comfortable with that. Some guys do 65, some guys do 80. I like 50. It's my happy zone. Um, the only thing I do change is my top shot. Uh, sometimes I do 50, sometimes I do 60. If I'm, 50, if I'm fishing 50 pound test uh, fluorocarbon that day, I'll do 50 pound test uh, top shot. Excuse me, if I'm, if I'm fishing 50 pound test uh, liters or 50 pound test rigs that day i'll use 50 pound test top shot if i'm fishing 60 i'll go with the current current and you know match up my my rigs with my top shot um this rod will be set up for 50 tomorrow again no reason just want to just want to fish one rod 50 tomorrow and one rod 60. so my way of connecting this would be i do a dropper loop the dropper loop comes up about six inches and the way I do it is that same knot I showed you before, that um, figure eight, it's about six inches. We always use flat sinkers. Take your flat sinker, thread it into your loop. You tighten it, make sure it's nice and flat and straight. Take my uh, leader. So this right here is the uh, the snafu rig I'm connecting it. Pretty simple, really simple, guys. I go to the middle of that six inch dropper or six inch loop that I and it's my sinker loop or my leader that's doubled up. It's halfway up from the sinker to the knot, pinch it, make a loop. I thread it in, in, and around. Two hooks gotta go in. Once that's through, two overhand knots. You wanna thread everything through so the knot does not get caught up. So one and two. You wanna put that sinker through the through loop. Wet it, cinch it down. Now take this and always pull it up. Cinch that thing down. Tight, tight, wet it, tight, and that's it. That, my friend, is how I connect my rigs. This is streamlined here. We have double loop, flat sinker. I have about a 13 inch liter snafu here, two hooks. So in this case, what I'll be doing is taking a whole crab, one hook in each joint. That's it. That's pretty. I mean, there's no other way to, you know, to, to kind of describe it. Um, I keep it simple with that. Uh, this is a 12 ounce flat. I usually fish, you know, from six to eight. Um, tens, 12. You know, 12 is a really the tide is kicking, but keep it at. Uh, I try to keep it a lot. The lighter, the better. Um, my happy zone is the eight ounce. Uh, and I'll connect the exact same way when I'm connecting the uh, the slider rig to overhand knots. Um, this is actually ready to go, so I won't even be uh, rigging up when I get there in the morning.
I pretty much just set this up for my for my rod my rod cover on. I'm ready to go tomorrow morning. Um, that's it pretty much for my my first tutorial on my fish finders YouTube page. Uh, please message me, uh, leave remarks, questions, concerns. Um, I'm very interactive. Anything you want to talk about, I can. Um, leave some ideas, things you want to see. Um, I'll be doing some other videos in regards to equipment I use. You know, as the seasons change, you know, going to the off season, I'll talk about some of the strike bass, you know, plugs I use on the surf with the, the custom rods I use. Um, again, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big tog fisherman, so that's pretty much what I, my passion is, but we fluke fish a lot. A lot of trips up to Nantucket this year. Um, had some really good fishing. I had a day where I had a, I had a 13, a 10, 7, and a 10-1. It was absolute, you know, just just a day you dream of. Um, you know, I even porgy fish, you know. We, we bottom fish for, for porgies and, uh, and sea bass. You know, uh, I got lucky last week and happened to hook into a 52-pound black drum while fishing for tog out in Maryland in Ocean City with Captain Kane. Um, you know, the, the notorious, you know, well-known world record holder, Captain Kane Bounds. Uh, just, you know, we do it all. Again, we fish fire. So please leave your questions, remarks, concerns. Very interactive. Would we'll love to um, chat with you guys. Um, moving forward, okay? Got some good stuff lined up for 2019. Um, keep your eyes open for the Fish Finder brand. P H I N D E R S Fish Finders. Um, finders spelled with the P H, fish spelled with the P H. Talk to you guys soon.